So the inspiration for this song uh, comes from a unique story that is probably not well known. Can you tell your listeners the story behind Love is Always Stronger? Sure. So the inspiration for this song uh, started this summer, this last summer. I went to a songwriting retreat with um, Sarah Groves in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, A friend had encouraged me to go to that, and so I went, and it was so good. It was a a wonderful time of being around other songwriters and being encouraged um, in so many different ways, spiritually and um, just in our art. And one of the stories that Sarah told while I was there was the story of the cellist of Sarajevo. And he was a cellist during the Bosnian War, and... During that time, he um, was looking out of his window during the war, and he saw 22 people standing in line for bread, and a bomb went off and killed all 22 people. And as a result of that, um, in response to that, he took his cello and he played, um, he was a cellist um, for the symphony, and he took his cello and he played in uh, two different bomb sites over the next 24 days and they say that um you know the legend has it that he helped to hurry the end of the war because of that beautiful act of joy joyful defiance in the midst of those dark circumstances the cellist of sarajevo um was also a composer, conductor, and a performer, and he has inspired many different things as a result of his act of bravery as well, instead of being afraid in the midst of that darkness. And he was often under the threat of snipers when he was playing in those bomb craters. And he played El Benoni's Adagio in G minor, um, and that was the song that he he chose uh, to commemorate as like a tribute to those that had passed away or had been killed. Um, And so this full length version of my song um, has, I I got to work with a great live cellist who's playing uh, that very song in the beginning along with me on piano. Um, So that's what the full length version is. The singing starts around 90 seconds, um, my additional um, song. So the beginning is Albanoni's Adagio in G minor. And this idea of joyous defiance has been, um, you know, tumbling around in my brain for about a year or so. And I started writing um, some of the parts of this song a while back. And after Sarah told that story, I knew that that had to be included in it. And for me, um, in the Bible, the picture of Paul um, and him in jail and uh, singing in the midst of this dark situation is such a great example of that too. And so many times as a musician, you know, I'm looking at these examples of people that use music in the midst of a dark situation to be joyfully defiant, to sing, um, and to still show beauty in that art form. And specifically um, with Paul to show uh, that he's still worshiping and trusting in God. And so it says in Acts um, 16, and the the account is of him in jail is 16 through 40. And I'm just going to read a little bit. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the jail were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains came loose. When the jailer woke up and saw the doors of the prison standing open, he drew his sword and was going to kill himself, since he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul called out in a loud voice, Don't harm yourself, because we are all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in, and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. He escorted them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. Um, And then it continues on and talks about how his whole family came to know the Lord as well. And this all started 
because first they, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And my commentary, my, my little, the footnotes down at the bottom say, say, um, rather than being depressed or plotting escape, Paul and Silas displayed confidence in what God had in store for them. This was a powerful testimony to the other prisoners. And so in my song, in the second verse, I talk about them singing for all to hear that God is still here, even in the darkness, even in the hard times, even in the sickness, even in the quiet, even when you're alone, no matter what you're going through, that God is still there and that we can have joyful defiance in the midst of that darkness. Um, and as I was working on this song, I was thinking about this joyful defiance coming out and like, yeah, I'm still here and this powerful song, but it didn't feel right to me because there are so many times for me, it's this whisper of, yes, Lord, I trust you. It's, it's this, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you. It's not necessarily a victory cry yet. It's a faithful, yes, I'm going to follow you and I'm going to keep singing. I'm going to keep doing the thing that you've called me to, even when it's dark, even when it's hard, I'm going to do it, even if it's small and little and quiet. Um, and I have so many friends that struggle with depression or different difficulties in their lives. And I had them in my mind when I was thinking about this song that they don't wake up every day as a battle cry. They're waking up every day and they're making small decisions to remain faithful to what God's called them to. And so it's like a small bird singing in the rain, clinging to the faith that love is always stronger, that we can choose to love in the midst of darkness. We can choose to sing in the midst of our circumstances um, over being afraid. And so the last thing I wanted to end with was this. Um, this is from the book Sensible Shoes. And they're talking about flowers in winter. Flowers in winter. Meg seemed completely unaware that she just said something profound. Flowers in winter, Hannah repeated slowly. That works as a metaphor for the spiritual life, doesn't it? Meg looked puzzled. What do you mean? We have to hold on to God's declaration of love for us when we go through the trying and desolate seasons of our lives. We have to hold on to the promise of God's steadfast love during the winters of our soul when everything is stripped away. And that's um, what I wanted to end with. The chorus says, like a flower in winter, joyously defiant. Um, so in the midst of trial and dark times, just encourage you to cling to the Lord, to cling to real hope in Jesus, that he died for us, that he loves you, um, and to pick up your cello, to sing a song, and just do the next thing. His cello and played a tune 
This was all that he could do To bring beauty from ashes and hope to renew Like a flower in Oh